Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be going over how to shade a head, which we did a little headshot here. Uh, so pretty standard, everything's just lined, but not necessarily uh, shaded. So let's just go ahead and start off with that. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see clearer. Let's hope that this is uh, full focus. I think it looks good. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see better. So. Let's start off with the eyes. The eyes are going to be our, you know, kind of like our eye catching part, which you would want to pay a lot of attention to. So the basics of shading your eyes is to make sure that the dark, that the darkest part is above. Because that's where the eye casts a shadow, that's where the eyelid casts your shadow. So I would say about halfway, stop, and then leave that for now. So once again, shade it up to halfway, stop. So far so good, it's starting to pop out a little bit more, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're going to draw our middle value, which is uh, using a little bit of hatching, drawing a little bit lighter hatches, a little, sh little bit more, a little bit of value more down towards the bottom of the eye. And the reason why I make the, the eyes lighter up towards the bottom is because that's where the light catches. So if you want, you can even add, ooh, I don't know if this will focus very much. There. Uh, you can also add another highlight, which will be, which will make the character a lot cuter looking. If you want, you can add some little details along the eyes too. And that's how I would do eyes. If you want to, you know, sharpen up her pupils, go ahead and do that. So far, so good. I don't shade skin very much unless absolutely necessary. Um, however, I like to shade around the bottom of the neck. Very, very dark because that's kind of like a little cast shadow or a, yeah, your cast shadow here. And that's about it for the skin. Um, I like to leave the skin personally pretty blank just because... If I put too much value to the shading in the face, it starts kind of looking plastic. So I paid more attention to shading more of the hair. And then I focus on the skin a lot later. So I'll show you what I mean. So when it comes to draw, uh, shading hair, what you want to do is you want to first draw in your highlights on where they're going to be. This could be anywhere, but usually around the part where the hair starts bending downward and kind of because the, the hair is sort of like a round object. It, it's, it's surrounding a round object. So there's going to be like a circular motion to it. So there's going to be dark, then light, and then dark again. Around the edges here. And these uh, highlights can vary in size or vary in shape. So I'm not adding too much. I'm just adding areas where I deem it necessary. So this will be good enough for now. So once we have our our hair marked out, we can go ahead and zoom in once again just to see. There. Come on, focus. There. Then we can go ahead and shade. So this will depend on if you want your hair to be dark or light. I, I prefer this, for this character specifically, a darker look just because it kind of looks aesthetically for me a bit more pleasing for this kind of vibe. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and shade this in a medium tone first. So notice I'm hatching. I'm going to keep this at the same level. I'm not going to change my value. I'm just going to keep it consistent. I'm not going to darken. I'm not going to lighten. I'm just going to shade in one solid mass. And then I will go ahead and, and change the values later. So do that for everything. Just except for the ears. Ears can wait. The top part of the ears, you can do it, but not the fluffy part because the fluffy part, we like to have some contrast with light versus dark. And that'll make it look cuter, I believe. So notice how all this value here is pretty much very similar. Uh, no smudging, by the way. Do not smudge. I know you're tempted at this point to start smudging and make it look smooth, but do not. Not right now. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep inhaling my spit. Sorry. I'll have to edit that out again. But anyways, 
do not smudge because that will make it look very unprofessional. Uh, a lot of people s smudge with their uh, with their fingers, which will catch the oil, uh, which which will make the paper catch the oil and look very unappetizing <laughs> for the drawing. <clears throat> so, be careful of that. So once again, I'm just shading everything in the same value as best I can. Just, I'm not relieving any pressure. I'm pressing in the same amount of pressure that I do for everything else. And I make sure that the lines are close together in a, a uniform way. Surprisingly, I don't see a lot of artists traditionally shade their uh, characters fully. Um, because a lot of people just do everything in digitally nowadays. Um, that it's hard to see everybody do shading so perfectionately, I would say perfection. So in, in such a perfectionist way. A lot of the time this will be enough for an artist to show that this is just shaded. Because um, I know that a lot of people when they first start drawing anime, they want to make sure everything is so smooth and nice. Um, and of course, I mean like if you're, if you're copying off of an image, and the hair looks super smooth, you want your shading to look smooth that way, that's what they do. However, it ends up looking kind of janky, I believe, in my personal opinion. It doesn't look as good because this is not meant for a super smooth look. This is meant for like a sketchy look. But if you want to go all out, then that's a different story. Then you'll need some other techniques to do this. But uh, if I'm going to go a little bit more neater this way, I am going to go ahead and... Uh, shape let's kind of smooth it out and by smoothing it out i mean closing the gaps here so what i mean by closing the gaps is shading a little bit more so that it starts looking smoother from here however i'm only going to do that in some certain areas such as uh, close to the highlights where i can see it pop out more so i'm just shading it and i'm making this part a little bit smoother and i'm also adding darker lines just to show more like hidden strands that i did not show in my line work so for instance, uh, if I want to add a little bit of a dark line here, I can do that. And I don't have to do that physically through a line work. Um, I can just shade that in and that'll be it. If that makes sense. And if you accidentally smudge with your finger, you know, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, sometimes like when I'm moving my hand around, I accidentally smudge and I'm like, dang it. But no need to worry too much about that. So I'm only shading in areas that are closest to the highlights and also in areas where there would be shadows. I might need to change my lead again. But, so areas of shadow include underneath the fur bits. So that would be extra dark. And hiding, you know, kind of hairs, hair hiding behind other hairs. So I'm adding some nice... Um, Areas where it's tucked in more, you know, areas behind the face, I tuck it in more. So I make it just a little bit darker. So then that will make it pop out a lot more. Especially in areas where you want to show more strands, you want to make sure that you have dark, darks and lights. So the way back in the hair would be the darkest because it's completely covered in shadow. And here will be darker than the other strands as well. Notice how I'm still shading in the direction of where the hair is going. I'm not just scribbling. I'm making sure that this is an organized shadow. So I'm hatching in an organized way. So it's not always just, oh, just scribble it in and you're good. Because the scribbling can affect how your your piece looks. Um, so make sure it's controlled and make sure that it is not just all over the place. So I'm making sure that when, when I'm putting in my strokes, I'm making sure that they're going in, uh, that they're you know following the, following the gravity. And yeah, that's pretty much how you would shade hair, really, really simply. Um, if you want to outline the border a little bit more, go ahead and do that. That just makes it a little bit more solidified. You're drawing more solidified, so darkening your, darkening your lines work well. 
if you want to color in the if you want to shade in the skin be my guest but do it very very lightly so underneath the hair for example i'm going very lightly underneath the hair kind of drawing in the shape of the hair itself as well just to kind of show that the shadow matches the hair shape And then for the choker, uh, if you want this to be more of like a satin type ribbon, uh, a satin type ribbon or satin fabric ribbon is more like a very reflective kind of, uh, kind of a reflective fabric here. So you would have a dark and then you would have a light with some half tones and then you, and you would go into dark again. And that is it. So that is more of like a satin kind of ribbon look. If you want to do the ear fluff, uh, be my guest and just simply, you know, draw a little bit of an outline of where, your where you want your shadow to be. And then just shade that very, very lightly in the shape of in the shape that you've drawn. And that is it for our head little head drawing. Let me know if that helped a bunch. Uh, be sure to ask any questions if you need to. And I will see you guys in the next one.